Hello, gentle listener, and welcome to Nocturnal Transmissions, the fortnightly podcast that brings you dark tales, both old and new, performed by voice artist Kristen Holland. Beloved patrons, this diabolical year is finally drawing to a close. Ye gods, 2020 really put the you-know-what in Anus Horribilis, did it not? I have no doubt you have all been touched by the cold, uncaring hands of this past period. Some of you in devastating ways. We wish you better times to come. We hope that the perspective we've all gained from this past year is going to guide us all towards a wiser, more appreciative, more caring, more thoughtful future. Fingers crossed. On a lighter note, here's a fun announcement. It's not going to do much to fix the world, but it may provide an amusing distraction. Please do excuse this interruption, but we have a brief announcement. This is a Patreon subscriber exclusive episode, one of the many perks of supporting our humble production through Patreon. Nevertheless, we will still be sharing this little teaser, as it were, with you, our non-Patreon subscribed friends of the podcast. If you wish to hear this and our other Patreon-exclusive episodes in their entirety, just visit patreon.com forward slash nocturnal transmissions. All right, thank you for your time. And now, on with the show. Always most welcome. This instance is certainly no exception. What a fantastic and unexpected suggestion this one was. It proved quite a challenge for our humble narrator. So, let's have at it. Nocturnal Transmissions is proud to present English poet Christina Rossetti's uncanny mid-19th century poem, published in 1862, gentle listener. Goblin Mark. Morning and evening, maids heard the goblins cry. Come buy our orchard fruits. Come buy. Come buy. Apples and quinces, lemons and oranges, plump unpecked cherries, melons and raspberries, bloom-down-cheeked peaches, swart-headed mulberries, wild free-born cranberries, crabapples, dewberries, pineapples, blackberries, apricots, strawberries, all ripe together in summer weather. Morns that pass by, fair eaves that fly, come by, come by. Our grapes, fresh from the vine, pomegranates full and fine, dates and sharp bullaces, rare pears and green gauges, damsons and bilberries, taste them and try, currants and gooseberries, bright fire-like barberries, figs to fill your mouth, citrons from the south. Sweet to tongue and sound to eye. Come by. Come by. (laughs) 
evening by evening among the brookside rushes, Laura bowed her head to hear, Lizzie veiled her blushes. Crouching close together in the cooling weather, with clasping arms and cautioning lips, with tingling cheeks and fingertips. Lie close, Laura said, pricking up her golden head. We must not look at goblin men, we must not buy their fruits. Who knows upon what soil they fed their hungry, thirsty roots? Come by, call the goblins, hobbling down the glen. Oh, cried Lizzie, Laura, Laura, you should not peep at goblin men. Lizzie covered up her eyes, covered close lest they should look. Laura reared her glossy head and whispered like the restless brook. Look, Lizzie, look, Lizzie, down the glen tramp little men. One holds a basket, one bears a plate, one lugs a golden dish of many pounds weight. How fair the vine must grow whose grapes are so luscious. How warm the wind must blow through those fruit bushes. No, said Lizzie, no, 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 their offers should not charm us, their evil gifts would harm us. She thrust a dimpled finger in each ear, shut eyes and ran. Curious Laura chose to linger, wondering at each merchant man. One had a cat's face, one whisked a tail, one tramped at a rat's pace, one crawled like a snail, one like a wombat prowled obtuse and furry, one like a ratel tumbled hurry-scurry. She heard a voice like voice of doves cooing all together. They sounded kind and full of loves in the pleasant weather. Laura stretched her gleaming neck like a rush-embedded swan, like a lily from the beck, like a moonlit poplar branch, like a vessel at the launch when its last restraint is gone. Backwards up the mossy glen turned and trooped the goblin men with their shrill repeated cry, Come by, come by. When they reached where Laura was, they stood stock still upon the moss, leering at each other, brother with queer brother, signalling each other, brother with sly brother. One set his basket down, one reared his plate, one began to weave a crown of tendrils, leaves, and rough nuts brown. Men sell not such in any town. One heaved the golden weight of dish and fruit to offer her. Come by, come by, was still their cry. Laura stared, but did not stir. Longed, but had no money. The whisk-tailed merchant bade her taste in tones as smooth as honey. The cat-face purred, the rat-face spoke a word of welcome, and the snail-paste even was heard. One parrot-voiced and jolly cried, Pretty Goblin, still for Pretty Polly. One whistled like a bird. But Sweet Tooth Laura spoke in haste, A good folk, I have no coin to take were to purloin. I have no copper in my purse, I have no silver either, and all my gold is on the furs that shakes in windy weather above the rusty heather. You have much gold upon your head, they answered all together. Buy from us with a golden curl. She clipped a precious golden lock. She dropped a tear more rare than pearl. Then sucked their fruit globes, fair or red, Sweeter than honey from the rock, Stronger than man rejoicing wine, Clearer than water flowed that juice. She never tasted such before, How should it cloy with a length of use? She sucked and sucked and sucked 
the more fruits which that unknown orchard bore. She sucked until her lips were sore, then flung the empty rinds away, but gathered up one kernel stone, and knew not was it night or day, as she turned home alone. Well, there ends our little teaser, I'm afraid. If you'd like to hear the rest of this story and our other Patreon-exclusive episodes, just join up on our Patreon page as a minion, acolyte, or cohort. The choice is yours. Normal services will be resumed in a fortnight's time. We look forward to seeing you then. Gentle listener.